Welcome to podcast number 28. Uh, once again, I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to listen and uh, to uh, offer some great suggestions uh, for some topics. And uh, this topic is actually kind of an interesting one. Um, we, we've talked a lot about breaks. Um, <laughs> talk a lot about, oh my gosh, what are the silver bullets of our sport? Well, the silver bullets of uh, motorcycles are eyes and brakes. And we'll continue to talk about brakes. And in this podcast, Yes, we've had a podcast or two on brakes. Guess what? You're going to get another one. Mainly because we're not we're not necessarily seeing the braking get better, but because I want to be able to say it slightly differently. And that really came uh, came to light uh, with me uh, over the summer. I had two separate instances where I'll, where I'll talk about that in just a second about how even though I was saying the same thing, I said it slightly differently. And both of these riders on very very different levels. Uh, we're able to actually um, uh, incorporate the, this into their riding. So, yeah, we've talked a lot about brakes. You know, it's part of the order of our sport. Uh, we've talked about some of the differences in, in um, you know, adjust- adjustability with the brakes. Let's break it down a little bit further. And I, I think that when you when you hear it this way, um, it'll it'll make a lot more sense to you, or at least to help the people that uh, are struggling with this. So yeah, we've got brake pressure. Absolutely got brake pressure. Uh, but I want you to think about brakes a little bit differently, as brake timing, brake timing. And what that simply means is there's a specific time where you should have different brake pressures. So just understanding first of all that brake pressure is is literally infinite, infinitely adjustable, right? What bike you're on, what speed you're on, what grip level, what lean angle, what, what corner radius, completely, completely adjustable. And this is why the motor controls are such a big deal in learning these great habits with motor controls and how, and, and how fine and precise um, your motor controls need to be so you can do this. So, yeah, I, you know, just, just understanding that there's not one brake pressure for every corner every time. There's not. There's 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 billions of them, right? It just depends on what you're doing at that time, your speed, your your bike you're on, your situation, when you're scared, what direction you need. All this is adjustable. So there are some great things though that as you as you take through this that as you take through this um, that 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 might make a little bit more sense to you. So where this really came from was over the summer I had two separate instances, uh, one uh, on a very high, high level uh, and another one with, a, with a, a person that was literally just starting out on the track. And at a very high level, uh, it was with J.D. Beach, right? J.D. Beach at, at Laguna this year, um, Moto America race. And, you know, we're, we're going through it and looking at J.D. segment times and he was off in one segment time. So for JD, right, we look at it at a very, very high level, and you know he's running within four or five tenths of the of the 600 uh, overall 600 track record there, and he was off in one segment. And once we looked at the data, what we noticed on the data is when I looked at his when I, when I go over the data with his crew chief, and we we basically are looking at technique at that point. What we're looking at is we look at his brake graph. He'd go to the brake, he go to the brake for this particular thing, which I'll explain. He go to the brake initially too hard, back off. But when he backed off, because he's going so dang fast, he actually backed off too much and then went back to the brake and then was late getting into the corner. It ended up actually rushing the entry of the corner. He had his brake pressure too, too much brake pressure too deep into the corner. Essentially, his brake timing was off. And we sat down and we, and, and we showed JD, okay, wait, JD, what kind of corner is this? And he's like, oh, well, yeah, it's a very, very long entry, very huge entry corner at Laguna and, and turn seven and up at the top of the corner, eight, the top of the hill before the corkscrew and we realized the braking zone is so so long so long there that the brake timing needed to be lighter and longer right lighter and longer at the beginning of our braking because the radius ended up tightening up right so in other words we wanted to look at our brake timing what we're trying to do is keep his overall speed as high as high as it can be but yet we have to respect where the bike's got to be slowed and pointed. So <clears throat> we had when when we looked at this, JD would go to the brakes too hard, too early, kill his speed, and then realize, crap, I killed my speed. He'd jump off the brake, and now his bike would pick up speed, and or pick speed back up, 
right? Then you get into the corner too late and be like, oh my gosh, now I'm in the corner too deep, go back to the brakes and have too much brake pressure at the apex and be overslowed at the apex. And in JD's world, right, this was huge, right? It was it was half a, half a second, right? It was, it was that that's massive in his world. So we said, JD, let's look at your brake timing. When should you have maximum brake pressure? And we mapped it out, and we realized by by him being lighter at the brakes at the earlier part of his braking, because that's what that's what that corner, right? That's what that radius allowed. Then he go to the brakes have a very light overall braking, and then he'd build pressure when he was supposed to build pressure, and then he'd be able to trail the brake off as he got to the apex, so so he wouldn't be overloading the front tire so much. When, when he did that, he's like, you know, Ken, you've been telling me about this for about a year and a half. I, I finally now understand it. He goes, I actually have to brake differently for different corners. Even though he was doing it, it just wasn't in his brain. It wasn't in his mindset yet. So... We got, he's like, okay, I get it. Now, you know, that corner is a super, super long entry, big radius. And then the interesting thing happened is he goes, when, when we did that for seven and eight, he goes, I could then really work on that for two. It made more sense for two. And then he was able to really utilize that. And he, he just had never put together when the brake should have the appropriate amount of pressure based on the radius of the corner. Uh, the other example is I was working with a client um, just very, very new to this, and we were doing some of our slow car driving. And uh, for the people that have worked with me, we know what a big deal car driving is, right? We do a lot of slow car driving, what a big deal that is to, to what we do. And it was the same thing is, is that this person would go to the brakes the same for every radius. And he's like, well, gosh, I keep, I'm keep i over slowing my entries. I'm going to try to keep going to the brakes later and later and later, but then he keep going to the brakes harder and harder and harder. And he didn't realize that, how, how, how the different radius corners affect what type of brake pressure I should have. So let's, let's kind of back into this a little bit. So when we, look at a, let's, when we look at, for instance, a very, very short radius corner, right? The short radius, in other words, the arc, right? The, the radius of the corners is very short. Then we have to get everything done in less time because that's what that radius offers. So the tighter radius corners, We'll, we'll, when we go to the brakes, we'll go to the brakes, we'll build brake pressure, but our brake pressure has to happen much, much earlier because that's what that corner has to offer. Corners that have a big, big long radius, right? A big, big entry. And we want to keep our overall speed up longer because that's what the radius has to offer. We'll go to our brakes and we have a lot lighter brake pressure overall. And this is where we started thinking about, okay, with, with JD, we, we started thinking about, okay, we, we can be lighter and longer at the beginning of our braking because we wanted to keep our overall speed up going into that corner because that's what it offered. There's other corners where we want to keep our speed up at the end of our braking, right? Because what's roll speed? What's roll speed and entry speed? <laughs> it's the byproduct of a good entry. It's how well you use your brakes. So what we would think about then to keep our roll speed up is we would use our brakes lighter and longer, pause, at the end of our braking to keep that speed up. I just got done uh, with a bunch of days up at the ridge, up in, um, up in Washington. And what we saw, what I saw, a common thing, a lot of the videos that I watched up there was that a lot of people had a lot of brake pressure too late. So they'd get to these very, very, there's a couple of very, very tight radius corners. They go to the brakes very lightly and then they turn in with very light brake pressure, and then they build more brake pressure, and then they basically had maximum braking close to the apex. Well, not only would they miss their apex, they screwed up their exit as well, and they ran a heck of a lot more risk. In those corners, what we wanted to do is still go to our brakes, and I'll explain, I'll explain how we're gonna adjust for that. We wanna to go to our brakes, build brake pressure very quickly, build into that brake pressure, get that, get that, nice, that nice shark fin uh, graph that we're looking for, but then get off of that brake pressure fairly quickly, but not let go of it so we can keep that entry speed and roll speed up, right? Because if we're going to trade our lean angle points, uh, if we're trading lean angle points for brake points, that's how we have to do it. So what we also saw in that track, the Ridge, great track, uh, is turn one and two. Massive, massive, 185 miles an hour on a, super, on a, on a 1,000. And... When you go to the brakes, and this is great because we had, we had Jake Gagne there, and uh, what Jake was able to see was that when he went to the brakes, 
it was how light he goes yeah he goes i literally feel like i literally feel like my brake my my fingers are just resting on the brake lever they're barely on the brake lever and jake was riding a stock bike that had a brake light on it you literally see how little brake pressure did jake on you have the brake light was flickering on and off on and off because that's how little brake pressure he had and then as he got more into the corner where he should have more maximum brake pressure right because the radius is tightening up then he used more brake pressure so thinking about brake pressure versus brake timing we need to look at our situation we need to look at the corner what does that corner offer and then we can start to look at um, um, how that works so put this into play a little bit first thing is right we're gonna look at what kind of corner it is what we just mentioned the second one is is where where should we be where should we be letting off the brake got to think about where we're letting off the brake based on that corner radius and now we got to put it into play right the technique starts with that first five percent of braking and that last five percent of braking that 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 person i talked about in the car they didn't realize that every time they went to the brakes at 30 or 40 percent they completely overslowed their entries and then they tried to get in deeper and then went to the brakes harder they were literally having the same problem over and over again we had to put them in a position to adjust so we worked on going to the brakes a little bit earlier but lighter now we've got a place to adjust right now we can go to the brakes at five percent you go oh wait a minute i need more now i can build more brake pressure so that first five percent of that braking right that first five is what allows us to adjust for the rest of the corner radius right then you can go oh yeah yeah yeah. i need more here then i can i can apply it but you got to put yourself in that position first that last five percent of your brakes that last five percent of your brakes is that fine fine direction you not giving up on that brakes specifically not giving up on the last two percent of the brakes five four three two two one right that's how that works saw that a lot um, at some of the last race days that i did i did um, the track day before um, at one of the racetracks and we saw a lot of people giving up on those brakes and realized that wait a minute i'd have direction sooner by staying with the brakes at the very end of my brakes, I'd have direction sooner, I'd have more contact patch and I'd have a better drive instead of dumping off the brake, lose direction and have to wait for the direction to come back to me. So first five, last five, it's a bigger deal than you think with the brakes. So brake pressure versus brake timing. Let's start off with what kind of radius it is, right? What is my radius? When should I have the right kind of brake pressure? Where should I be letting, it, letting off the brake? And then we can put ourselves in a position to make that happen and let, let's think about that right think about where are you having maximum brake pressure and where should you have maximum brake pressure where are you having you know again where are you letting off the brake is a huge huge way to look at that also thinking about how we're trail braking yes if you're not trail braking you need to be trail braking and there's some great ways to be able to, to to start that process of just getting that brake feel going so i wanted to do this one again brake pressure versus brake timing thinking about it a little bit differently and now you can start thinking about how is your brake timing.